Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Let me formally introduce myself for the people that are either new here or just started following us or haven't been following us long enough to know a little bit about me. So my name is Wendy. My real name is Wendelin. And I have two kids and another one on our way. I am 27 years old. I turned 28 in October of this year. So in a couple of months, I'll be turning 28. As you guys can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be telling you guys my story. Finally telling you guys my story of when I found out I was pregnant at 16 or my 16 and pregnant story. I've been doing YouTube for about three years and this is probably the most recommended video that you guys have asked me for. And I'm finally doing it. I have a little mukbang. I went, me pasé de lanza. I kind of got a little bit of everything. This doesn't look so appetizing, but it's so yummy. It's a blended matcha with cookies and cream. We also got an aguita para la dieta for to the balance. I went to Yoshinoya. I'm having a clam chowder right now with some crackers. We got some egg rolls and we also got some noodles and beef with veggies and rice so i hope you guys don't mind those videos where people are eating like mukbangs i thought it would be easier for me to do a mukbang story time because um it just makes me less nervous to talk about this and stuff so i just thought let me just eat to like como calmar mis nervios and I could talk to you guys. So I hope you guys don't mind. Con su permiso, voy a comer. If you guys have never had the clam chowder for that, I don't know why, it's, but it's pretty good. It's a little bit fishy, but... I really wanted wings, but... It's a little bit too far and I don't want to be driving around. The reason I finally decided to make this video or sit down and talk to you guys about it is because on Friday Emma turns 10 years old and that's so crazy to me which means that 11 years ago I was pregnant like 11 years ago I'm gonna try to get through this video without crying but I can't promise it I'm pregnant I'm hormonal and emotional and everything these days makes me want to cry for no reason like I haven't even said anything sad and I want to cry but hopefully my lashes don't end up like flopping off because I actually did my makeup this morning and I don't want to be like halfway through the video and my lashes like flopping off. But in a decade, like a decade ago, I was pre well, over a decade, 11 years, I was pregnant. So that's just so crazy to me, like 11 years. It just feels like it was just yesterday that I was in high school walking the hallways with my big old belly like and now I'm pregnant with my third child. Like, it's just the whole thing to me, like, blows my mind. And I know I'm not the first person to get pregnant at 16. Nor am I, like, um, how, how do I say this? I don't want anybody that's watching this to say, to think that I am encouraging young girls to get pregnant. It's never that. I do want to tell my story, how it went, how it happened, and where I'm at now, 10 years later. So, what was I going to say? I'll be doing a part two with my mom on our other channel. If you're not following us on that channel, it's called Cafecito and Chisme. Well, where I'll be asking my mom or like her reaction of how she found out I was, when I got pregnant. So this video is pretty much going to be like my side of the story in a way. Like um, how it felt for me, how it was for me and all that stuff. I'm not going to really touch base on like what happened between me and emma's dad or stuff like that because that's not this type of video also i waited a long time to make this video because i didn't want to tell this story from a place of hurt a place of resentment or a place of anger i wanted to tell this place this story from a place of of healing when once i was healed a place of like my testimony but once i was ready to talk about it it's been 10 years and i think it's time i think i'm ready to talk about it i never tried their noodles i think they're like a new thing they're called the uh, japanese noodles so vamos a ver qué tal it's 
It's a little dry. Como que... Como que no. This is my first time trying them in. Como que no. We're gonna pass on this one for these. This, I know for sure I like. I love this one. I get the beef bowl with veggies and rice. And I put some sriracha. So, I, I kind of told this story. Like, very briefly, I have mentioned my story here and there. But... I remember I, I posted it on TikTok, kind of like a little story time. And when I got pregnant, people started commenting like, the age doesn't add up, your numbers don't add up. Because I got pregnant at 16, but I used to never say that I got pregnant at 16. I always would say 17 because I got pregnant summer 2011, summer of 2011. So I think it was July, summer 2011, I got pregnant. And my birthday is in October. So literally three months later, I turned 17. So most of my pregnancy, I was 17 years old. So when people would ask me, would you be like, I was 17? Just to make it like, I don't know, like make sense or make it easier for people to understand. Because they're like, how are you 16 and you were a senior in high school? I'm like, I was 16 when I started my senior year. But... I turned 17 right away, so I graduated high school at 17 years old, and I started college at 18 years old. So, let me just tell you guys a little backstory um, about like me and Emma's dad, just very briefly. So, I met Emma's dad before I even started high school. That summer before I started high school in 2008, I met him. We started dating right away, so I was with him all my high school years. So as you can say, he was like my high school sweetheart or whatever. So we're together all of um, all of high school. He was one year older than me, so one grade older than me. So 2011, um, he had already graduated high school. I was about to start my senior year um, when I found out I was pregnant. I found out in July right before I started senior year which was pretty hard because I was in the cheer team. It sounds like the typical stereotype Latina cheerleader gets pregnant like <laughs> I don't know. And let me tell you guys not to sound braggy or whatever but I was low-key pretty smart in high school or whatever. I always had good grades. I never missed a test. I always turned in my assignments. I was like a good girl in school. Besides the fact, you know, like all the other stuff. Which I never regret. You know, I don't regret having my daughter. Of course, I wish I would have waited till I was older, at least out of high school. If I can never go back and change time. So then why even like think about that? Like type of stuff. So... The way I found out I was pregnant, so I was I told you guys I was a cheerleader in high school. So we had summer camp, summer cheer camp at school, and we were about to start senior year. Senior year, if you're a cheerleader, if you're in high school, it's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big year, you know. That's it, like your time to like shine or whatever. I was a flyer in the cheer team. Cause I was I was so tiny, guys. Let me tell you guys. In high school, I'm five feet tall, right? But in high school I was 91 pounds 91 pounds i was a twig i was so skinny in high school like skinny 91 pounds like that's why i was a flyer because of how skinny i was but so the way i found out i was pregnant i had to go and get a physical for school for cheer um before the senior year started i had to go get a physical so i went to my regular like a doctor in kaiser i was actually still like in the pediatric department, my mom would even go with me and she'll be in with me. And I remember this day like so clearly. I went with my mom to get a physical. The doctor was in there and she's like asking me like, oh, when was your last period? My period was always irregular in high school. Um, it was always, never. I never had like a set time. I would always come when I wanted. Um, so I never really would like track my period, I guess. 
Um, so when I went to get my physical, the doctor was like, when was your last period? This and that. I was like, oh, I don't know, this day. I really don't remember. My periods are not regular. And then she's like, okay, well, it's just a routine. I'm going to have you go and get a urine sample for a pregnancy test. We do this to everyone. Really did not think anything of it. I was like, okay, whatever, not a big deal. And then they made my mom step out, I remember. They made my mom step out of the room and they asked me like, are you sexually active? Are you with somebody, this and that? And I was like, uh, like yeah, you know. Order like all the like regular STD, pregnancy, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I thought nothing of it because um, I was always just with that one person, you know, like he was the only per my first everything, my first love, my first everything. Like it was just those type of like um, relationships, like the first um, real boyfriend that you have type of thing. And you're all in love. You're so going to be bien enamorada. You're going to be together forever. You know, like that type of cliche of high school that we think it's going to be true. Anyway, so I leave the doctors and... It literally passes like two three days pass and I'm with my girlfriends. I, we were I already had a car back then I had a car I was 16 my girlfriends had cars too But I remember we went to cheer camp in the morning My mom would let me drive it if it was to school or to like do something like not that far just uh, Finished cheer practice and we were going to one of my girlfriend's house just to eat breakfast or whatever and I remember I was at their house It was like four of us and I get a phone call from Kaiser, but I was like I don't know but it's crazy now that I think about it like Kaiser only calls you if it's like no news is good news when they have to call you usually not a good news but I did not think about it like that back then but I got a, a voicemail from Kaiser I guess I had a missed call and they left me a voicemail and the voicemail said you need to call us back it's urgent we have your lab results or your lab test or your test came back something like that and I was like, my test? Like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, I hadn't, it still hadn't, like, you know, crossed my head at all. So I get to, I go inside my girlfriend's house and I was like, I'm going to call them really quick. You know, they left me a voicemail. I'm just going to see what they want. So I call Kaiser and I'm like, oh, like, did you guys call me? Like, you guys left me a voicemail. And they're all like, oh, yes, we did. Are you alone? I'm like, what do you mean? Am I alone? Like, are you with somebody like uh, are you safe I'm like what are you talking about like what do you mean if I'm safe if I'm alone she goes um for this for this news you're gonna have to like sit down but it's weird to me that they told me over the phone I don't know maybe because I was like 10 years ago I don't know but they're like oh can can you like find a place to sit or something or like or be with someone, something like that. I don't really remember the exact words, but it was something like sit down, like, are you safe? Are you with somebody? Something like that. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, we just want to let you know that your that your test came back positive for pregnancy. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Like, my like, what? Like, I was like trying to. I was like, what are you talking about? My pregnancy test. She's like, yeah, you're pregnant. And that's that's when it hit me. I was like, I'm what? Like, I kept asking them, like, what? Like, what are you talking about? I'm, they're like, yes. I think I even had it on speaker with my girlfriends. I don't remember, like, exactly. Because I, now I feel like all that, those couple moments after when they tell you you're pregnant and you're not expecting it, it's kind of like, you go into shock. They were like, yeah, you're pregnant. They're like, are you okay? Like, do you need me to call someone for you? Like, like, I think they thought I was, like, going to be suicidal or something. Or I don't know what they thought I was going to do. But they were like, you need me to call someone for you? Are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm here with some friends, whatever. So immediately after that, I break down. I start crying. I'm like, what am I going to do? I think that's the first thing that comes to my head. It's like, what am I going to do? For, like, two seconds, I'm like, am I keeping this baby? Am I not? Two seconds, that's it. After that, I was like, I have to. I don't have a choice. I have to own up to my consequences and I have to, I'm going to keep this baby, you know, like regardless of, I hadn't even thought about my parents. It was just like, I wasn't even thinking about like Emma's dad or my parents. Nobody, I was just thinking about myself. I was like, well, I have to live up to the consequences. Um, 
it is what it is i already did the act i don't have a choice i really don't have a choice i'm gonna figure it out as i go but as of now like i'm gonna have this baby you know i was with my friends i was crying they're like what do you want to do do you want us to call um the dad and i'm like i'm like well yeah you know i have to tell him like we have to figure this out together so i meet up with him and i tell him and he's like you're kidding i'm like i'm not like my friends were there i think in the car like watching the whole thing and like well he's like he's like well what are you gonna do i'm like well, I'm gonna keep it. He's like, all right, well, whatever you want to do, I support it. I'm like, okay. I was like, all right, so what do we do now? Like, should we tell our parents? Like, what are we gonna do? Like, that question just kept coming around. Like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Like, if I had to figure everything out in that moment, which I didn't, but I just felt like I had to. So the first thing we did was call his sister, his oldest sister, which I used to be super close to her because she was older. She kind of had gone to like through something kind of similar. So we call her, we told her, obviously, you know, we're both super young. He had just gotten out of high school. I was barely going to start my senior year. So she wasn't too happy, but she was supportive. She goes, I'm here for you guys, blah, blah. And then um, I get to my mom's house and I cannot keep anything from my mom like she either could see it on me right away that I'm lying or that I'm keeping something. I think it's like that mother instinct. But I can never keep anything from my mom because she like figures it out. She's like a witch. <laughs> or maybe she could tell I had been crying or something because as soon as I get home, I'm like in the kitchen with her. Or I don't know what I'm doing. She's like, what's wrong? What happened? I'm like, with what? I'm trying to like not tell her. I don't want to tell her that same day. Literally, the same day I found out and I told Emma's dad and I told, I guess, his sister. I think we told his mom. No, I didn't want to tell my mom the same day. I kind of wanted to like get myself together and figure it out. How was I going to tell her and my dad? But I couldn't in the moment when she like asked me what's wrong. I just started crying. <laughs> I started crying, like I couldn't hold it back. Like, at the end is like, what's wrong? And then she, right away she's like, you're pregnant. And my face was like, she's like, you're pregnant? I think her first reaction was obviously like, like mad. And then she went into like, it's okay, like we're gonna figure this out. So, uh, it's just so like emotional. Don't get too much into detail on that one because we're going to have a whole other video just on my parents' reaction. Mostly my mom's. But yeah, after that, we did tell my dad he wasn't very happy, obviously, because who's going to be happy when your 16-year-old comes and tells you that they're pregnant? Now that I see it as like a parent perspective, I don't know what I would do. Obviously, I would, I would help my daughter out and whatever. Like, so... I know that must have been so hard and now that I see it, I'm just like, shit, I'm sorry to my parents, you know, that's like not easy. Nevertheless, we we went through it, you know? So I was pregnant my whole high school, mostly most of my like senior year. I gave birth in April, so I was still not even done with senior year. I would go to school, I remember uh, I would be pregnant. I would be walking around the halls with my belly. I would try to hide it as much as I could. But my high school was so small. We literally had uh, 400 students. Like overall in our whole high school. Each each uh, class had 100. Like 9th grade had 100 kids. 10th grade 100. 11th 100. 12th. So we had a super tiny school. So everybody knew I was pregnant. Literally probably the next day I came to school. There was no hiding it. So I was pretty embarrassed, you know, go to the bathroom and I would hear like people whispering, that's her, that's the pregnant girl, that's the girl that's pregnant, blah, blah, blah. Like I could hear people talking behind my back and what can I do, you know, like there was nothing I could do. My friends were like pretty supportive. I remember, well, obviously I got dropped from the cheer team. My friends were like on the yearbook committee or whatever. And they would come around taking pictures of everybody. I remember this. It kind of like hurt me a little bit. I remember they were they would be like, "Sorry, you can't come out in the pictures" or something like that. I was like, "Why?" I guess they didn't want like a pregnant girl coming out in the yearbook representing the school or something. I was like, "What the heck?" Like, it's like the one that goes like from here up. 
Okay, so literally like a month after I gave birth, I had to go back to school to finish up my senior year if I wanted to graduate. I, I wanted to graduate too because I didn't want to do like, um, like get like a, what are they called? GDs or any of that. And I had talked to all my teachers before I left like on maternity leave. They're like, yeah, if you do this work, you know, you're going to be up to date. Um, they were very encouraging actually. They were trying to keep me on track so I could graduate with my class and I actually ended up graduating high school with honors, which is pretty crazy. I went back to school in May. I finished up the year. I actually also went to prom. I remember prom. I went to prom. Um, I, I had already had Emma, so my prom was like at the end of May or like June, something like that. And I remember I was wearing a dress. I went to prom. I left Emma with my mom for a few hours. And I remember I was breastfeeding her still, so my dress... Uh, Two, three hours into the party, I started leaking. And my dress was like that satin material. So you could see it. I was so embarrassed. Like my prom, I was like full of milk. I was just like, let's just go home, you know, like. So I went home. And, but yeah, my birth was pretty traumatic. I had gestational diabetes when I was pregnant also. So I had a pretty big baby. She was 8.5 pounds. I had a natural delivery. So for me being from being 91 pounds when I first started my pregnancy, they're like, oh, you're underweight. You have to gain more weight than when you usually usually pregnant women gain 25 to 35 pounds. They're like, you're underweight. You need to gain 40 something pounds. I was like, okay. But yo me pasé. I literally gained 60 pounds pounds in my pregnancy i was big i was big and i'm also very short so those 60 pounds you could see them on me um i also did get gestational diabetes towards my third trimester which is hard you know i was i didn't know what the heck i was doing and then the gestational diabetes all that was new to me but obviously i was going to do what i could for my daughter so i would go to those classes i would be with like 30 something year old ladies like and I'll be just sitting there, like I was gonna do everything to obviously not further this gestational diabetes. I was able to control it with just a diet. I would, I changed my whole diet. My mom would cook for me. She would make me like um, no carbs. I wouldn't eat carbs. I would eat a lot of veggies towards the end and like meats, like no sugars. Like it was hard, like because I was pregnant, I would crave stuff and I couldn't. And I remember in high school, um, also, I when I when I found out I had gestational diabetes, they gave me the little machine to be checking my sugar every two hours. So I was in high school, and in between periods or classes, I would be checking my sugar. I remember my best friend would like help me, you know, because I would have to poke my finger, collect the blood, check the little machine, write it down. I would have to do that every two hours. It was. It was a bit much for like me because it was a little bit overwhelming but i did it and i was able to not get insulin i was able to control it with just a diet so thankfully that was good i really have no structure for this video i feel like i'm going like this this and that i really don't know what you guys wanted to know about my pregnancy story or what you guys want like what i should tell you guys i guess i'm just telling you guys like i over brief but if there's something like super specific that you guys want me to talk about i could always do like a part two or something i know you guys want to know my parents reaction and that's what i'm gonna be doing for sure but like in a different channel but if you guys want something else like besides just like my over story i will be telling you guys that if you guys want it as my camera died so i had to switch to my phone so i do apologize if the quality of the video kind of changed but i wanted to finish this video for you guys before i gave birth my parents ended up um fixing up their garage for me and emma's dad and obviously emma for when she was born for us to have a space of her own so we lived in my parents garage I lived there until Emma was about three years old. In high school with a newborn baby, I was sleep deprived, trying to focus on graduating high school, trying to get into a decent college so I could at least go to college or university right after school. So it was hard, you know, no sleep, trying to stay on top of my stuff. Like, 
um it was hard also to keep up with like a relationship type of thing um but i was trying to do my best trying to manage everything at the same time looking back at it now i was really doing my best i could for being 17 years old but yeah guys i didn't really have a choice i was not gonna abort my baby i lived up to the consequences of getting pregnant a lot of people in my high school that took the easy route and got abortions i know so many people and maybe to this day they still live in regret or whatever about what they've done but i would never get an abortion myself i just never really even thought about it i was like i did the deed i gotta live up to my consequences and i'm gonna figure this out one way or the other because i really don't have a choice and regardless if i did it by myself or not i did it you know like um i think that's just what a mother does is just put your kid first in front of everybody and you're just gonna keep moving forward after i graduated high school i got accepted into a couple universities i did apply for and i ended up going to one university which was the closest to my house it was it's called csun i don't know if you guys have heard of it if you guys are from around here but it's cal state northridge i did about two years there it was pretty hard you know having a newborn baby and going to college but i thank god my mom would help me out a lot she would help me watch emma so i was a full-time student at first um while emma was small i was a full-time student um i had scholarships i had grants i had fafsa i had all that so i was pretty set with school i didn't have to work because school was paid for plus i wasn't even 18 so i could work i turned 18 that year but at, in october and school started in august so focusing on school you know i wanted to get education i wanted to um get a degree i wanted to finish school go to college get a degree get a good job all that stuff but all that kind of like fell apart when i became a single mom i became a single mom when sorry this is probably the hardest part to talk about I think it's the hardest part to talk about because I feel for all the people that have to do it alone and it's it's hard it's so hard like I'm so grateful to have my mom and my parents that helped me out so much it was hard for me because Obviously, I never like pictured being a single mom. God has a plan for us and his plan did not involve that person in it. Before I used to be like, why God? Why me? Like, what did I do to deserve this? Like, but now I look back and I'm like, thank God. Thank you for removing that person from my life. Like sometimes like we're so stubborn and we want to force people to be in our lives when they're not supposed to be in your life. We want to force it, but God removes people to put better people in your life. People that you really need to be in your life. But it's hard for me to talk about this because um, I became a single mom when Emma was only nine months old so I me and her dad split up and it wasn't something that i wanted it wasn't something that it wasn't something that we both agreed on in a way i don't want to get into too much detail because it's not really important anymore you know but it hurts to think about it to think about that still because i was hurt for so many years 
so many years and it was so hard for me to move on it took me so long to move on because as a mother i guess all you ever dream is to have your family together and you never dream of like you know having to do it by yourself sometimes we don't have a choice we don't have a choice and we have to push forward and i didn't do it for myself i did it for my daughter because she was looking up at me she was i didn't want to let her down you know so once all that happened like the separation happened i never looked back i was hurt for so many years but i never went back i never looked back i moved i moved on i moved forward but it did take me years to heal and I thank God I found an amazing husband and father to my kids. I guess the hardest thing was that I was never going to have that family that I imagined. But now I have something so much better. So much better. And at the beginning I couldn't see it. February 2013. And it's crazy because I met my husband Joseph that same year in july of 2013 so if you think about it now i didn't even have time to really heal when i met someone else so when i met joseph i wasn't really looking for somebody and it's when you least are looking for someone that you find somebody but i think i would do a separate video on like all that because that's not really my pregnancy story it's just part of my story but yeah guys hard thing for me was probably having to be a single mom but i would have seen myself now 10 years ago i would have been like wow it's gonna be worth it it's gonna be okay everything you're gonna do you have to go through hell first to get to the place that you're gonna be but if i would have seen that 10 years ago i'd be like no way like that's not gonna be my life emma is such a smart little girl she's so smart and I feel like every time I see her, I feel like I'm looking at an accomplishment in my life. Like, I see her and I'm like, wow, I really did the thing. Like, I really did the single mom. I raised her. She's so, like, she's just such a good girl. She's so polite. She's so smart. She's, like, the sweetest girl you'll be. And you guys could see that through our vlogs, like, the way she is. <laughs> see her dad her dad's still involved in her life i don't want you guys to think that he's not he is involved um we do have like a custody order all that stuff so she sees her dad a lot and she's loves her dad and she also loves joseph like she i've talked to her i sat down you know like she's kind of grown up in that lifestyle for her it's a normal thing to go with her dad every other weekend i want her to know that it's okay that she could always talk to me uh, fast forward 10 years later here I am we have our own house I have another baby on the way we have our three-year-old son and we're just I'm just living my dream life now you know this is this is my dream life this is I'm really living it I get to stay home with my kids uh, I don't have to bust my ass anymore like i used to i used to go to school I used to have to drop off emma at daycare i would wake her up at 5 30 in the morning we would leave the house at 6 in the morning so she could be in daycare as soon as it would open which was 6 30 i'll drop her off go to school so i could be there by 7 from 7 to 2 go to school go pick her up from school drop her off with my mom and i go to work from 3 to 11 p.m that was my life for a couple of years like it was school work school work school work I, so i felt like i missed out on a lot of her being small because i had to work guys i was a single mom i had to work no one was handing me money work i had to bust my ass you know but it's it was worth it at the end and it's still worth it and it's just crazy i want you guys to know that if you're currently going through something like this it gets better it gets better there's a light at the end of the tunnel um uh, just don't give up you know your kids let them be your motivation to push forward and always you know pray to god that's what also helped me was like getting closer to god it was, that's what helped me heal 
really is hard it, a lot of people don't talk about that part like just get over it get over it like no you can't get over it you have to heal in order to heal you have to forgive even if you don't want to forgive them even if they don't deserve to be forgiven forgiven you have to forgive that's the only way you can move on and now i see my story as like a testimony as a something i like to talk about because it's something that i'm also proud of i used to be so ashamed of people judging me of telling my story but now i see how far i've come how much i've done and i'm not even in my 30s yet and i'm already living my dream life you know so if i hope you guys see this as like motivation or encouragement that if you're currently in a situation like that or you're currently going through it or you're watching this because you are 16 and pregnant i wish you the best don't give up on yourself uh, of course put your kids first but never put yourself last either i don't really know if this is the type of video you guys were expecting if this is the type of video you guys wanted but i just kind of went with the flow wherever it took me like when i was talking so i hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely was something that's not easy for me to talk about but i'm glad i, I was able to finally tell you guys my story um uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to comment on the video, like, and subscribe to our channel. I really appreciate it. I love you guys. And stay tuned for more That's videos. I, have to say. I hope you guys enjoy it. I love you guys. Thank you guys for always supporting me. I apologize for all the crying, but it's just sentimental to me. And I love you guys.